All right, hello ConvertKit users. Today we are going to go over how to make two of the different form types that ConvertKit offers actually look nice because I know the way that the default forms look is a big frustration around people who aren't familiar with coding and CSS and whatnot. So I have some instructions here for you today that will hopefully make that nice and easy for you. So we're going to start by making this uh, simple horizontal form look a bit nicer. We're going to make it, make it end up looking like this. And then we will move on to their form for an opt-in incentive, which starts out looking like this. We're going to make it looking more like this. So both options are a whole lot better than the default, and um, it's going to be nice and easy. So start in your ConvertKit dashboard. We're going to go ahead and do the simple horizontal one first. So click Create Form, choose a form, and then for this one we're going to go with the one all the way to the right. So here's what we have to start out with. Again, not gorgeous, it's not terrible, uh, but we want something that matches our brand and just looks a little bit nicer overall. So start out by clicking the little magic wand up here and typing in your colors. So I always make this text color a little bit darker. I do 333. And then go ahead, I don't think the accent color is used in this specific form, so I always just set the button color. So go ahead and enter your brand color here. I will enter my own. And then click OK. So already that's looking a bit nicer. There are some things we're still going to change, but uh, this is a great start. So now just go ahead and click Save. It's going to do a reload. And then click the Settings tab. And we're not going to go over a lot in here for now. Um, I'm just going to enter a title. And make sure you don't skip over the rest of these options. I usually um, enter people into a sequence and stuff like that. If you want to edit your incentive email, send them to a custom thank you page. Make sure you're not skipping over these. But for the purposes of this tutorial, all we're doing is making sure the form looks nice. So go ahead and skip over to the Styles tab and scroll down to this Custom CSS section. So this is where I've written the CSS for you to make your form look more like uh, my example, which is this. So go ahead and copy the CSS for the horizontal form, which I've provided in the blog post below this video. And here is what that's going to look like. So just a quick explanation of what everything does in case you want to change it. So let me get that form back up here. Okay. So to, we'll start at the very top and just go through. I want to go through everything with you in case you want to customize anything for yourself. Um, that way you um, will know how to do it and won't just be wondering what all these values mean. If you don't really care what they mean, you just want it to look like this, go ahead and skip forward a minute in the video or so, and we will get right to how to use this. So to start, I'm setting the margin on the form, which just decreases the size between your text and the form, because by default, there's a ton of space. Um, usually the text wouldn't start until way up here, and there would just be a big white space around your form. So that's what that does. I've also set the max width to none, because by default it's 700, so it won't take up the full width of your screen. So next, the padding. This is um, actually doing the same thing as the margin here and just decreasing the space between the text and the form. So if you want more vertical space between your text and when your form starts, just increase one of these options. So if you increase this to 20, it would double the space in between the form and your text. Next, text transform uppercase. What I'm doing is setting the text on this button to be uppercase. So if you don't want that, you can go ahead and just highlight all of that and delete it. This next part here, where I'm doing box shadow none and font size 16, that is for these text fields. So by default, they have a funny little shadow going on. Um, you can kind of see it here, how there's a shadow around and inside of them. So what I did is I just got rid of that because it looks more modern without the shadow. And then I also decreased the font size to 16 because I don't like how it looks when the font is um, the normal default size, which is a little bit bigger. And then last, all of these are doing the same thing, just in different browsers. So this one is working for like Google Chrome and Opera and Safari, I believe. 
Um, these ones are for Firefox, and I think this one is for an older version of Internet Explorer, but they are all just darkening this placeholder text right here because by default it's a light gray, which isn't actually showing up very well here. And it could even be something that's a default with your specific theme, but I like to make sure mine is darker, so I go ahead and set that to like a black color. So if you want to make some changes, go ahead and do that. Otherwise, go ahead and copy the CSS that I've provided and paste it in this custom CSS section. And then click Save Form. After that, again, you want to make sure you play with your settings up here, but then you can click Embed. From here, you can copy just this line. All you have to do is click, and it's going to highlight it for you. You can copy it, and then add it to your form. So just to show you, I will add this one a second time. So go ahead and click the text section or the text option if you're on WordPress and just make an extra space, add it in there. I'm going to click preview and here it is right here. So that's all there is to it. You can paste this little bit of code wherever you want in a widget area, in a page, in a blog post, whatever works for you, you can put it there. So that's all there is to making yourself a nice, um, simple subscribe form. So now we are going to move on and make one that works better with an opt-in incentive. So this one we're going to start out just like the last one. Go to your ConvertKit dashboard and click Create Form. Choose the Form option. This time we're going to do the one that shows off a lead magnet. So click this middle option here. And here's what we're working with by default. Again, I would not want something that looks like this on our website, so we are going to pretty it up a bit and make it look a little more like this. So start by clicking the wand button again and entering your colors. I like to do a nice black for the text. Accent color, I believe I like doing my pink, we'll see. Yep, I like to have the pink um, in the border. And then for the button, I do my orange. But again, you wanna customize those to fit your brand. So next, you can change any of this text here just by clicking. Um, for now, I'm just going to leave it for the purposes of this, but go ahead and customize yours if you want. Um, now we are going to upload the image. So for this, you don't need to do a huge file size. Um, I believe when you display on your website, the height is going to be 170 pixels. So if you don't have to, don't upload anything that is taller than 340, just because it's no use loading a bigger image than you have to. Um, so go ahead and click that and browse to the image you want displayed. So I have my mock-up right here. When you load it, don't worry if it looks like this. All you have to do is click Save and it's going to reload and fit where it's supposed to. So this is all we're going to do in here right now. So then go ahead and go to Settings. And be sure to fill out everything in the main settings and incentive email section. I'm not going to do that right now so then, since that's not the point of this video but I will give my form a name. And be sure you click save every once in a while, just in case. So again, make sure you go ahead and customize this, but I'm gonna skip to the style tab. So again, in the blog post, I have the custom CSS you can use for this. Um, this is what it looks like. I am going to open up the form that I created just so I can explain what those mean. So this right here, the border bottom color. Um, by default, your bottom border is going to be made a darker color than your top border. I didn't like that, so I went ahead and added my uh, brand color again for the bottom. So you're going to want to change this to the color you, en you entered as your accent color. Unless you like that they change the color, then just go ahead and delete this line completely. The box shadow removes the shadow that they put around the entire form. And this border top width makes it so the top and bottom borders are the same because I didn't like it that the top border was wider by default. Um, so I just narrowed it down to make it the same as the bottom. Then these parts, I am targeting this join the newsletter here, whatever you have for your title. And I made the text center aligned and then I made it all uppercase. So if you want it aligned to the left, you can just go ahead and delete that. And if you don't want it all uppercase, you can go ahead and delete this line too. Next, we have, we're doing some stuff for the image. So by default, the image is aligned all the way to the left. I wanted mine centered, 
So that's what this line is doing, and then this line is just helping it out. It's making sure it takes up the whole width so that it can be centered. So if you want your image aligned to the left, you can highlight all of that and delete it. Next, I am changing the area, the extra space around the form. So by default, there's a whole bunch of extra space up above the words here, and there's a whole bunch of extra space at the bottom. So what I did here is decrease that and make it a more compact form. So if you want a different amount of space above and below the form, you can decrease or increase these two numbers by an even amount. Next, these three things are actually changing this uh, little description you'll have at the bottom. So I wanted extra space between this text and the image, so that's what the padding is doing. It's adding a little extra space right here, and then I have it aligned center because before it was aligned to the left. With this, I'm making these two labels uppercase because by default they're just kind of regular. Whatever you type is what you're going to get. I always want mine uppercase, so I went ahead and changed that. If you don't want yours uppercase, all you have to do is highlight that and delete it. These lines here are changing the text fields. So this one, the border radius, makes it so the corners go from rounded to square corners. If you want rounded corners, you can delete that line. And then this line is adding more space between the fields. So by default, they're pressed up pretty tight against each other, but this line gives it a little more space. Next, this section is changing the button. So the border radius is the same as up here. Um, it's changing the button from having rounded corners to having a square corner. So if you want rounded corners, you can delete that line. I'm making the font bold. Here I added a little more space um, between the text and the edge of the button. So if you want even more space, you can make this number bigger. If you want less space, you can decrease it or just delete this line completely to go back to the default. And then again, I made the text all uppercase. And then the very last thing I did here was hide the ConvertKit text that appears. Um, I think by default it says powered by ConvertKit. I don't want that on my form, so I hit it with this line. So once you change everything and get it to just how you want it, you can highlight it all and copy it and add it to the custom CSS section and hit save form. And just like the other one to add it to your website, you can click embed, copy the JavaScript there, and I'll show you again how to add it. Edit your page, go into the text view, and just add it wherever you want. I'll do a preview, and here it is right here. So that's all there is to making your ConvertKit opt-in boxes pretty. Again, you can customize any of the text I wrote, or you can just copy and paste it and call it good. If you have any questions, feel free to ask in the comments below, but otherwise I hope this was helpful and your forms are looking much nicer.